Can engineers change the future? I know, we already have, right? We have airplanes and cars and devices, but that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about engineering being the key to a future where climate change isn't the problem we've got anymore. Why do I think we can do that? The answer is because we've done it before. Imagine a hundred years ago. Would you want to be a worker in a factory? Would you want to be riding one of the big steamships? Things weren't safe. The average garment worker's lifespan, once they started work in a factory, was about four years. In the four years around the turn of the century, around 1900, 13,200 coal miners died in American coal mines. Today, that number's less than 20 a year. What has changed? Engineering has changed. And I'm going to tell you that story. March 25th, 1911, there was a terrible fire in a factory. The Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire began in the morning. It was just another day, just another factory fire. But unlike the other factory fires where the bodies were left in the charred remains, on this day in Manhattan, with everybody watching, 146 young girls jumped to their death out of the ninth floor windows, most of them clinging to each other, most of them on fire as they jumped out of the windows, and all of Manhattan watched. Two weeks later, 62 engineers got together and decided to prevent what's preventable. They started with the idea of being honest, being honest about what the problems are and being honest with the solutions are. What does that tell us about what it was like in their time? The factory workers had been protesting for a long time. They didn't really like dying at work. The politicians for a long time had said, we can't do anything about it. It's the price of progress. And of course the factory owners didn't know what to do about it either. Look, if you don't want the job, you don't have to take it. There's somebody else behind you who wants the job. That type of situation is where the engineers who built the factories were working. And something about that situation made them decide that being honest was important. The second thing that they decided was that they would work on things that they were knowledgeable about. That tells me something else as well, that sometimes we're tempted to come up with solutions that don't really fit the problem. And engineers don't want to do that. They want to work on what they know and they want to change it in a way that fits the third principle, prevent what's preventable. Look at what the actual problems are and change so that they aren't problems anymore. Those people didn't get together and say, we're going to work on safety. They said, we're going to work on preventing what is killing people. Turns out the first idea that they had collectively, and they all agreed to go back to their own factories and change it was to make sure that the doors in the factory opened outwards and that there were unlocked doors that people could get out of in the event of a fire. Remember a hundred years ago, there was no such thing as fire extinguishers, no such things as sprinkler systems or our fire alarms or fire escapes and not the doors that you could get out of to save your life. So they all went back to their factories, they changed the doors, they didn't ask for permission, they didn't wait for a law, they didn't wait for an economic analysis, they just did the thing that they knew would have saved all 140 six of those girls lives and it turns out that factory fires happened every day but in the fires where those guys who got together and agreed to do what needed to be done where they worked the insurance companies didn't have to pay out nearly as much and it turns out that the insurance companies started putting pressure on all the factories to do what those guys were doing and that was the beginning of the american society of safety engineers they taught other people, other engineers in other factories what they had done. They kept thinking of new things. Some of their first ideas were, were safety glass that would let people protect their eyes from all the things that kept blinding workers. 
gas masks that let people not breathe in all these new and exciting chemicals that people were coming up with. And of course, fire protection. So many things that we think of now as just automatic that had to be invented by somebody. If the engineers, just a few of them getting together, could come up with that idea to change how they're doing things in a way that prevents harm, prevents accidents, prevents death, prevents damage, and they just do it. Is that a lesson for us today? It is a lesson, but the biggest lesson is that it wasn't until the 1970s that the government agreed that that was what they should do. In 1970, the Occupational Health and Safety Administration was finally formed to require that all the things that the Association of Safety Engineers was already doing had to be done. Do not wait for your politicians to solve your problems. It isn't going to happen. And it wasn't until almost a decade ago that an economic study showed that for every dollar spent on safety, six dollars of benefits are derived. Do not wait for the economists to figure out how we're going to combat climate change. We know what needs to be done. We're going to get together. We're going to do it.